Hi, I'm Alessandro Sanford. This is my wife, Rihanna, and this is my oldest daughter and joy of our lives, Kaya. Uh, when we first had Kaya, she was our firstborn, and of course, what a joy that was. She was developing really normally until nine months. We started to notice some things were a little off, and uh, we were a little concerned. She wasn't crawling at the right time. She was starting to lose her grip on certain things and really wasn't developing like she was supposed to be. And so we began a quest uh, that led us another two years plus uh, before we got an official diagnosis, and it was of Rett syndrome, something that we had not heard of, and uh, just an amazing shock to be that parent getting that news that uh, your daughter may not ever talk or may not ever walk. Um, the long-term prognosis is that there is no cure. They're working on one feverishly, but uh, right now there's nothing on the horizon that uh, is immediately impending. And so here we find ourselves in a situation where we have no control over this, this sickness, this illness that affects our lives. We'd never really envisioned ourselves being parents of a disabled child, but yet here we are in this situation. So we're left with a major decision to kind of live our lives in a, in a quandary of frets and worries and doubts, um, focusing on negative situations and really allowing ourselves to just kind of almost lose our minds, um, go into a period of depression, we could do that. Or we could solely lean on the supernatural strength of God to give us the peace that passes all understanding, to um, help us um, to be her parents and to give her the things that she needs and to meet her needs. But you know, at the same time, being able to remember that Kaya is God's child first, and then, and he was able to bless us with her, and to try to focus the most as we can on, on him, and, and helping us on a day-to-day -day basis to get through this, this, this journey of life. And so, Rihanna mentioned that there's a daily battle, and it starts with the decision uh, to really not be controlled by your situation. Uh, and that's something that we have to do every day, to not be controlled by the things that we see uh, that aren't the way that we wish they would be. Most of us, if we would look at our lives and examine them closely, there's one or two things that aren't the way that we wish they were. And we tend to focus and magnify those things and make them bigger than they really are. And we neglect all of the various 50, 60, 70 things uh, in our lives that are going well and that are that we're doing well in. Uh, if we looked at all the challenges that we had with Kaya not being mobile, uh, getting her around, just taking the kids to the store is a major chore. Uh, we've got all kinds of obstacles that we have to deal with with our van. We're trying to get it equipped with uh, to be able to have her wheelchair in it, to have a lift, to have a ramp. All of these things we're thinking, you know, normal, quote unquote, normal families don't deal with. But yet here we are. And so it's a, it's a choice daily that we have to not be overwhelmed by the negatives. And so that's our challenge is to always maintain our focus on the positive things. Just as the scripture says, whatever is of a good report, to think on these things. And that's a daily battle. It's a, a decision uh, and a battle to keep ourselves focused on the right things, on the positive things, and on the things that are uplifting to us in the middle uh, of our struggle. And we don't have to have a victim mentality. Um, we can choose uh, to live a power or God-empowered life, uh, something that's beyond anything that we could ever imagine. And I don't think uh, we'd have that same resolve and that same strength um, had we not gone through and experienced our, our, uh, our battle with, uh, with Kaya's illness. Yeah. And, and one thing for me is that I really needed to make sure that I did not, um, was not moved by only what I saw. The whole, you know, we walk by faith and not by sight. Because if we walk by sight, <laughs> I'm going to run myself into a hole really quick. And so that has been something for me that I decided that we were going to believe that God could do anything and everything regarding Kaya. And, and we do. We do believe that God is able to do everything um, more than what we can ask or even imagine regarding Kaya. So why not apply that to Kaya as well? And, you know, we pray on a daily basis that God's will would be done in Kaya's life and that whatever his purposes is for her, are for her, that those things would come to pass. And um, 
we're in the you know like we said we're thinking about the things that are positive well what what are the things that are positive that we focus in on like you know thanking god that he's healed her from seizures and she was having seizures two weeks straight and um then all of a sudden they quit and i know that that was him i mean we didn't have any any um medication to thank for that we were we completely thank god for restoring her um and um you know freeing her from those seizures and here we are almost three years now of her being seizure free which is not common in Rett syndrome so we thank god for that we thank god that she can eat you know she still has pretty good use of her hands to be able to feed herself and you know she's a happy girl she's not on any medications at all um and so we're we're grateful and we praise god for those things and um, we know that he has other things in store for her, and uh, we'll continue to give him the glory for it. So some of the lessons that we've learned out of this situation, you know, of course, aside from the obvious things where you question God, why me? Um, I've actually come to a place in my life where I say, why not me? Why can't I be an example of how to deal with adversity in a positive way and be an example to other people? Um, which we've really had opportunities to do with other parents of girls who have Rett syndrome and other people who are dealing with various other difficulties. So we really got us strengthened us and turned us into a, a stronger marriage, a stronger couple, a stronger people. Uh, our faith uh, really has been strengthened rather than weakened by this situation. Um, and so that's been a great lesson for us to understand that God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. Um, one of the things that I'm thankful for, you silly girl, one of the things I'm thankful for uh, is the lessons that God has taught us. And uh, one of the things that God is teaching me through this process is that, is that an answer to prayer delayed is not necessarily an answer to prayer denied. Uh, we read about the scripture in our passage about the, the man who was paralyzed for 38 years. Um, and you wonder how many times he prayed and how many times he, he you know, asked God and bargained with him. Uh, make my situation better. Um, and, and there was a, a long delay from the time of his first asking, I'm sure, to the time that he actually saw his answer prayered. And so there's a, even though there, there is a, uh, uh, there's a difficulty and there's a struggle, there's still a hope that's out there. And we like to maintain our hope that things are dark now, but they'll get better. And I want to encourage anybody listening to me to, to remember the same thing. Your answer may be delayed, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's denied. Um, an, another thing that I've again talked about is, is Romans eight twenty eight being applicable for us today is that all things work together for our good. And so nothing really happens to us, but it all happens for us. God works things for our advantage. And I'm reminded of one final thing, a scripture, a passage of scripture in the Old Testament where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are facing a fiery furnace. They're facing death because they won't bow to an idol. And they said to the king, they said, our God is able to deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we'll still not bow. And that's the attitude that we have to take in our lives, is that if God never removes this situation from us, will I still worship him passionately? Will I still believe that he is a good God? And will I give him everything that is in me?